<laughs> Next on Ebert and Roper, Academy Award winners Halle Berry, Hillary Swank, George like. Clooney, and Robin Williams. What do you do besides those say? Box office stars Bruce Willis, Adam Sandler, Lindsay Lohan, Brad Sweet, Ben Stiller, and Clive Owen. Something funny. They all have one thing in common. They starred in some of the absolute worst movies of 2007. And today we get our revenge. <laughs> Let the countdown to cinematic hell begin with this special program, The Worst Movies of 2007. I'm Richard Roper. And I'm Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune. Richard, T minus 10 and counting. Let's, <laughs> Let's go. go through them. <laughs> All right, Halle Berry is one of the least convincing investigative journalists in the history of cinema. In my number 10 pick, Perfect Stranger. Bruce Willis sleepwalks through his role as an advertising mogul who just might be a killer. This trashy murder mystery is filled with confusing flashbacks and a howler, a howler of an ending that makes you mad at yourself and the filmmakers for wasting your time. Do you have any idea what the word loyal means? I bet your wife is wondering the same thing. I'd like to believe even the most cynical Hollywood producers are at least trying to make good, mass-marketed entertainment. But it's hard to make that case for the number nine movie on my list. It's Rush Hour Twa. Jackie Chan continues to struggle with his English. Chris Tucker continues to shriek and preen his way through every scene. Rush Hour 3 is stuck in some kind of weird 1980s buddy movie time warp. I hated it. Wild animal, Lee. You are a super freak. Also stuck in a time warp is the eighth worst movie of the year. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. The homophobic gags in the supposedly enlightened comedy would have been dated in 1978. The contrived plot has firefighters Adam Sandler and Kevin James pretending to be married so James can keep his insurance benefits. Your domestic partnership is being challenged by the city. You guys have nothing to worry about because you're a legitimate gay couple, right? Oh, yeah, we're, uh, no, we're big time fruits. Oh, I like men. Jessica Biel like plays the idiot attorney who can't see through this paper-thin ruse. And what would a worst of the year show be without Rob Schneider, who provides the most offensive portrayal of the year playing an Asian minister. This movie wallows in stereotypes and then has the gall to lecture us about equal rights for all. Hypocrisy, that film, yeah. Here, my, <laughs> perfect Strangers, I'm glad you brought that up. That, that ending is going to be dissected in so many film seminars. It was like, oh, and, and they filmed, James Foley filmed that three, five different ways. It was like Clue. It's interesting, too, Michael, because James Foley, a lot of times you'll get talented people. You've got Halle Berry, mm. you've got Bruce Willis, and James Foley made one of my all-time favorite underrated movies of all time, At Close Range. Yeah, and good and job then, with Glengarry Glenn Ross. Yes, yeah. very good. And then you see something like this, and it's just, it's, it's unspeakable. Yeah, it so rough, let's not speak of it ever again. Rough gone. I now pronounce you over. Those are over. Thank now, you. starting out, my list of the worst movies of the year, I have two picks that I know someone who actually recommended them. Here's a hint. His name rhymes with Schmitchard Schmoper. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> movies are like people, really, and uh -huh. some movies just aren't that into you. Uh, Take my number 10 this, pick, Ocean's 13, a heist picture so stuck up on it's itself great. it wouldn't it ask itself out on a date. You okay? Yeah, no, I just bit into a pepper. Is that? Hmm? Are you? Are you watching Oprah? So, Ocean's 13 takes my number 10 slot. Wait a minute, 13 plus 10 equals 23? It's a conspiracy! That's the kind of dialogue you get in every scene of this year's nuttiest thriller, the number 23, which ranks at number 9 on my list. Jim Carrey plays a dog catcher whose life is turned upside down when Virginia Madsen gives him a book obsessed with the number 23. The only thing the audience was counting here was sheep. So what is this? What is 23? Is it... God? At number eight on my list is Wild Hogs. John Travolta, Tim Allen, Martin Lawrence, and William H. Macy are four weekend bikers from Cincinnati who hit the road for box office gold. Yep, a big hit, this one. Sometimes people just want a formula comedy that doesn't try any funny business, literally doesn't try anything funny. Cue the bird. I guess the one thing the film did prove is that if you get the right four guys headlining your movie, the people will come, and they'll have to bring their own jokes. Yeah, you know, Wild Hogs, as I was watching it, I was thinking, oh, God, this thing's probably going to make a lot of money. It's just going <laughs> to appeal, as you said, to a certain moviegoer that 
really doesn't want to be challenged at all. I mean, the more, more challenging decision would be, you know, junior mints or gummy bears at the, at the right. re refreshment well, counter. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Ocean's 13 I did recommend, and it's definitely yes, the lesser did. of uh, the three Ocean's, the modern-day Ocean's films, and maybe I had some residual affection left over, so it was a marginal recommendation. And I know I'm pretty yeah, much the only guy. Yeah, you're a player. You're in Vegas constantly. Uh, you know, uh, you, so, you got some pretty uh, Vegas... So maybe that's the thing. You know, I kind of uh, felt a little wish fulfillment there. Well, number 23, I know I'm like the only guy in America that liked that, the only person. You are on the planet maybe uh, but you know I liked it for some of the reasons you meant it's completely nutty and it's over the top but I, I do like all those kind well, of that's conspiracy also why like, that's, that's why you like you know, Southland Tales too right because no. it's totally nutty no, and didn't, didn't like it didn't ah. like it alright well, coming up next what's an Oscar winner doing in a movie like this we are got to pray yeah. plus one of the worst remakes of all time makes ah. an appearance as we continue our list of the worst films of 2007 give this to somebody nice Mr. Sunshine. That new girl's kind of cute, huh? We're counting down the worst films of 2007, and at number seven on my list is Lars and the Real Girl, which a lot of people love. I know, can't deny it. A lot of love for this film. Me, I save my love for better movies. In a little Midwestern town, a dear, shy fellow played by Ryan Gosling orders a sex doll, not for sex, but for simple social companionship and an assist in getting over the loss of his mother. By the end, everyone in the village is playing along with Lars' self-help project. Some Capra-esque comic fables you buy, some you just want to return. Mm. You know, Bianca's um, a missionary. Because I Said So, my number six pick, stars the very likable Diane Keaton and Mandy Moore. Now, keep an eye out for Ms. Moore, who makes more than one appearance on this show. Keaton and Moore play a meddlesome mother and a doormat daughter at each other's throats in sunny, funny L.A. Well, sunny anyway. The actors had nothing to work with, less than nothing, and really, Mandy Moore is pretty good. What, what deal with the devil did she do to deserve these projects? So beautiful. What are you going to do to that? Maybe you ought to button those buttons. You look like you're asking for it. I am asking. My vote for the fifth worst film of the year and the worst remake of 2007 is The Heartbreak Kid. This Farrelly Brothers project starred Ben Stiller and was a tragic come down from the 1972 original, the one with Charles Grodin, Shiksa chasing Sybil Shepherd all the way to Minnesota. Now that last sentence was easier to say than this movie was to watch. So how's Lila? I'm telling you, the second we got married, it's like a switch flip. Oh, I love it! What's the matter, Eddie, you little girl? The new Heartbreak Kid replaced the original satire of Jewish wasp hostilities with one stomach-turning gross-out joke after another. Heartbreaking is right. You know, Michael, uh, reliving the horror of some of these <laughs> films with you, and I'm thinking, how could I not find room for the Heartbreak Kid on my list, or because I said so, but it's as if we're taking out the trash, and you've already kicked it to the curb, so it's okay, I don't really need to help you take it out, and I, I couldn't agree with you more, and me anymore. You know, What's I up? really what like her. I really like her, but she had a horrible streak this horrible year. Streak. And you know, I, I think in the right vehicle, she could she could be a star. I'd like to see her become a star. Oh no, she's but really uh, we're going to keep track of the uh, the M squares here. <laughs> quite a few of them. Okay. All right, coming in at number seven on my list is two-time Academy Award winner Hilary Swank, headlining a disaster of biblical proportions in *The Reaping*. Now you know your town's in trouble when the river turns bloody red and the cows start dropping dead. Swank swoops in to investigate all those strange goings on. But what she didn't count on was one of those spooky movie little girls. By the time she says, I have to end this, we're thinking promises, promises. Are you going to kill my baby? No. Why not? Now, there's a scene early in my number six pick, License to Wed, where Robin Williams, who seems to be a regular visitor as well on his annual show, does what they used to call comedic riffing. It would have felt tired 20 years ago. Nothing works in this painfully unfunny live-action cartoon. John Krasinski and Mandy Moore, there she is again, redefine blandness here. Williams is at his manic worst, and this supposed comedy features the creepiest characters of the year, twin mechanical baby dolls that act like the spawn of Satan. <laughs> oh, creepy robot baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop it! Ah! Stop! Stop! Popular comic Dane Cook and the lovely Jessica Alba are hopelessly mired in the scummiest comedy of 2007, Good Luck Chuck. It comes in at number five on my list. The conceit here is that if you date Chuck, you'll marry the next guy you meet. In the world of this film, all women are so desperate to marry, they'll hook up with this creepy, self-absorbed, juvenile jerko. Cam's the one man. What makes you think I'll be kissing him, huh? Oh. 
Things get even stupider, if you can believe it, when Cook turns into a stalker for no apparent reason and Elba tries to keep him at a distance, which is a good idea. But you know what? She's a klutz throughout this film, and that's always really funny. <laughs> okay, here's four words I don't get. Popular comic Dane Cook. <laughs> well, he is. He okay. is. Okay, the, reap the reaping, I think, uh, I'm with you on the reaping. I think uh, the remake, mm. if they do it, I hope is a musical. You know, of because, the reaping? Yeah, because you got ten, uh, 10 plagues, 10 numbers, 10 obviously good slots for numbers. Okay, when we come back, just when you think it's safe to go back into the theaters, it gets even worse. Richard and I continue our lists for the worst films of 2007. Mary, mother of God! You're not really here. Don't look so scared, Mr. Santeros. The future is just like you imagine. And the carnage continues. The Chicago Tribune's Michael Phillips and I are counting down the worst films of 2007. Coming in at number four on my list is Southland Tales, which stars The Rock and Mandy Moore. There's a critical school of thought that says an adventurous, abstract disaster is much better than just mainstream mediocrity. I say it can often be even more irritating and condescending. For example, Southland Tales. It's an indecipherable pile of pretentious cow dung disguised as an artsy fever dream. This post-nuclear tale rambles for an almost unbearable two hours and 20 minutes. Kill me now. I'm a pimp, and pimps don't commit suicide. In my number three pick, Norbit, Eddie Murphy plays three characters, and you know what? They're all cardboard stereotypes. Nicely done. He's the nerdy title character. He's the man who raised Norbit, Mr. Wong. And he's the hideous Rasputia. Now, this film hates Rasputia, and it wants us to hate her, too. Not because she's morbidly obese, but because she's an ignorant, mean, spiteful monster. In the year 2007, did they really expect us to laugh at mincing exercise instructors, insulting Asian stereotypes, flashy pimps, and fat lady jokes? Excuse me. What? Are you wearing bottoms? <gasps> of course I'm wearing bottoms. Okay. Now, you can't expect much of a movie based on a line of dolls, although I'm still hoping that the Chatty Cathy project comes through one day. But the second worst movie of the year, Bratz, was even more odious than anticipated. The plot is just a mean girl's ripoff, but what's really offensive about Bratz is the double standard. They're telling us the only thing that matters is what's inside, but they're showing us adolescent girls who dress like anime hookers and swivel their hips as if they're attending lap dance high. Yo, man, I, I got a little to say about Brant's myself, but okay. uh, but here's the other thing. Southland Tales, okay? Yeah. Can yeah. we can we just revisit that for just a second? Please don't make me go back there. Okay, there's a critical school of thought that defends sort of the messy, you know, half-baked failure or whatever yeah, with some yeah. ambition, you right, know? Right, well, right. Have you ever gone to a critical school of thought? No, and in fact, You've I'm, never I'm, enrolled. I'm, I'm trying never... to close down You're that trying... critical school of thought. Well, you know, it's right. almost, it's, that, the online courses are fine anyway. Right. So, thank you. Okay, at number four <laughs> on my list is Good Luck Chuck. Richard yeah. had it at number five. Boy, 10% I difference. I guess you liked there. it better than I did. 10%, <laughs> I, I, 10 yeah. better. Yeah. Dane Cook, my favorite, starred as a bachelor with the Midas touch. Whoever he sleeps with finds Mr. Wright right afterward. Now, can someone please explain Dane Cook to me? He actually got by and Dan in real life, a film I liked, but still, I need an explanation for his career. I'll pay cash for it up front. I'll pay. Now? Not now. Where do I get this? <laughs> Richard just had Bratz at number two. It's on number three for my list. And man, what we both wouldn't give to see a sequel combining the Bratz styles with the Bride of Chucky. <laughs> now, I'm not saying Bratz was lame or anything, but Transformers, I think, was a more realistic and lighthearted depiction of <laughs> Southern California teen life. What happened to us? It's the clicks. We're all in them. What do we do? We be ourselves, just like we used to be. We have that. Number two on my list is Shoot 'em Up. When I wrote about this little pisher a few months ago, it seemed like the bottom of the barrel for a certain kind of sardonic action film. But time passes, you see a hundred other movies, and I have to say, now Shoot 'em Up actually gets more rancid in retrospect. Partly because it's an A-list project with Clive Owen and Paul Giamatti having way more fun than we were. Mm -hmm. Tell me where the woman and child are, or I will be forced to cause you considerable agony. Nothing could be more painful than listening to you jabbering on and on. Also, I found the humor to be genuinely galling in Shoot 'em Up. Rule number one in Hollywood, if you're going to ram a carrot into someone's eye socket, as Clive Owen does in this film, you have to have better jokes 
than these. So they were awfully ugh. pleased with themselves. You could tell when they made this movie. And you know, we talk sometimes about some of these bad films doing well. In this case, Michael, uh, moviegoers had the good sense to stay away from Shoot 'Em Up. That's uh, right. That's as right. As well as the Bratz movie. Now, uh, real quickly about Dane Cook. Yep. I thought he was also pretty good in Mr. Brooks. So I think there is some talent there. He can he can play characters. That's right. You're a Mr. So, Brooks apologist. I, forgot I am about a Mr. That. Brooks yes. apologist, yes, right. and I, I remain so. All right. Coming up next, we each make our picks for the absolute worst films of 2007. All right, we've been scraping the bottom of the barrel. Now we're going to lift the barrel up and see what's underneath the bottom of the bottom slugs, of the barrel. Slugs the absolute there. worst movies of 2007. Now, less than 10 years after playing identical twins who were separated at birth in the remake of The Parent Trap, Lindsay Lohan has another dual role in the worst movie of the year, I know, I know Who Killed Me. She's a wholesome girl named Aubrey who's the victim of torture porn, and she's a slutty pole dancer named Dakota. Or could it be that Aubrey and Dakota are the same person? She looks just like her, but it ain't Aubrey. She's living inside a world she made up. You let both of us die just to keep your secret? You should be dead by now. I know who killed me. Looking exhausted and distracted, Lowen gives an epically bad performance. The harsh lighting, the bombastic soundtrack, and the insanely stupid plot not helping her out. And what in God's name is Julia Ormond doing in this film as Lindsay's mom? Now, compared to Lowen's off-screen troubles, a bad movie is just a bad movie. But if you have to hit rock bottom to experience a career rehab, I Know Who Killed Me should do the trick. Acting under the influence of the worst material, ay yeah, ay yeah, no just, good. Yeah, yeah. Ever since the dawn of time, humankind <laughs> has enjoyed one form of torture or another. Lions on Christians back in the day, good luck Chuck more recently. So, I suppose some of the outrage surrounding Eli Roth's Hostel Part 2 is just noise and overreaction, some of it. But this really was, for me, the cruddiest, emptiest, most vile picture of the year. And the thought of millions of 12-year-olds checking out the unrated version on DVD depresses me. How this sequel got by with an R rating in the first place is the mystery much more interesting than anything in the picture. I have to say, director Roth is not without talent, and that's precisely why his exercise in torture porn or Gorno or Slaughteronomy or whatever you want to call it deserves the title for me of Worst Picture of 2007 because he's a filmmaker who could be adding something to the horror genre instead of settling for Drek. Yes, Drek. Well, and I'm sure there's going to be a Hostel 3 and a Hostel 4, and uh, yes. he'll be as hostile as ever toward he, those He's going to have a big career, yeah. Yeah. you know, one way or the other. I just, But he, it's up to him. Right. He, he can, you know, he's making these pictures on the right size budget mm -hmm. to, to be able to do what he yeah. wants. Yeah. And if he's really, if he wants to get himself out of the basement, yeah. he can do it. And Michael, you know, with, with Saw 4 and Hostel 2 and Captivity and The Hills Have Eyes uh, and 2. And I know who killed me, another uh, torture uh, All these movies. Uh, a lot of those movies didn't make it to my list, and if people go to our website, I'll explain why. So there's, there's a reason why I didn't have a lot of those other torture porn movies on my list. There you go. All right, we'll be back to recap our complete lists of the worst films of 2007 right after this. Closed captioning for Ebert and Roper is sponsored by... Man has evolved to the point where he no longer needs to stand in line for tickets. The movie tickets card available only at movietickets.com. Guests of Ebert and Roper stay at the Peninsula Chicago, the city's most exciting luxury hotel, located in the heart of Chicago's magnificent mile. Okay, we're going to relive the nightmare one last time. Here's a recap of our lists of the worst films of 2007. Nice number 10, nice Perfect party. Stranger. I am so disappointed in you right now. At number 9, Rush Hour 3. I'm your brother and I'm fly. You done with that, Snoopy? I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry's at number 8. We're not really married. At number 7, The Reaping. You're in great danger. Number 6, License to Wed. Good I luck, Chuck comes in at number five. Pictures. Clocking in at number four, Southland Tales. Everyone wishes they were a porn star. Number three, Norbit. Oh! So number two, Bratz with a Z. You really can't come to my party. And number one, <laughs> I know who killed me. Why are you doing this? I can't really explain. Number ten for me, Ocean's 13. I know people who really know how to hurt. 
The number 23 is number 9. Ooh. 8 plus 15 is 23. Wild Hogs, number 8. Number 7, Lars and the real girl. Well, Bianca could help you, you know, she has nurses training. Number six, because I said so. Mom, you have to leave her alone. Number five, the heartbreak kid. Number four, good luck, Chuck. You look great. I had a good time. I gotta go. Number three, brats. We have to stand up for ourselves. Those freaks. Number two, shoot 'em up. You wanna buy bullets with food stamps? It's as good as cash. <laughs> and number one, hostile colon part two. <laughs> Some uh, truly awful stuff, my friend. Hey, better luck next year. Uh, probably not. <laughs> to revisit our picks for the worst movies of the year, go to at themoviestv.com. Next week, we'll be back with reviews of new movies. Until then, the balcony is closed. <laughs>